This is the City of God podcast, where Christ meets culture. And welcome to the City of God podcast, where we are weekly exploring today's biggest cultural issues all through the lens of God's infallible word. My name is Rob Pacienza, and today we are going to be interviewing Brandon Showalter. He is an investigative journalist for the Christian Post, and he's done a lot of research and reporting uh, on the issue of gender identity and transgender ideology. Uh, He had the opportunity to be featured in our documentary documentary called The Gender Delusion. He's also the co-author of a book called Exposing the Gender Lie, written alongside of Dr. Jeff Myers of Summit Ministries. And as we uh, talked to Brandon Showalter at the Pray Vote Stand Summit in Washington, D.C. this past fall, we talked about a number of issues. We talked about gender identity and how this has become a fad for so many children in our public school systems. We've talked about the dangers, the the tragedy of trans. Uh, tragic transgender surgeries, particularly with the next generation. We also had an opportunity to talk about parental rights and the role of the family in God's design for society and how those rights are being ripped away. And instead, now we are abdicating those rights over to uh, the government. And lastly, we talked about some of the state laws uh, that are uh, protecting children and some of the state laws that are actually going against the family unit and going against Uh, parental rights in our society and the ramifications in our society for those rights being stripped away at the state level. Uh, Brandon uh, has become a great friend of both myself and of our ministry and excited for you to hear from him, his heart, his passion uh, for this cultural moment. So without further ado, here's our interview at the Pre-Vote Stand Summit with Brandon Showalter. Brandon, really appreciate you being on the City of God podcast and for your work as a journalist at the Christian Post. Uh, you were a guest heavily featured in our latest special, Gender Delusion. Uh, why have you spent so much time targeting this issue in particular? Well, uh, the Christian Post unashamedly believes that if we get Genesis 127 wrong, we get the whole gospel wrong. So this is not just some sort of issue to the side, but to use an expensive phrase, theological anthropology matters to us. We were made male and female in God's image. And the gender delusion uh, feature that I was a part of and and sort of, or even more broadly, the transgender ideology, the proliferation of that dogma across culture, it is an existential threat to the gospel. I mean, obviously Jesus promised that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. We, that's a, but that's a global promise. It's like, it is entirely possible for this revolution to wipe out the influence of the gospel in a margin of the earth. And in the United States and wherever people read our coverage, we don't want that to happen, of course. Yep. But beyond that, this is also, also, I think, one of the most, If let's say you're more of a social justice tuned Christian. If this is not the epitome of the powerful exploiting the weak of the exceedingly rich exploiting the poor it is found in this space because what could be more cruel than telling a child that somehow his or her body was somehow wrong and the solution is to be is for them to be put down this experimental pathway of hormone blockers cross sex hormones and body altering surgeries in pursuit of a lie this is a scourge this is child abuse and we want to speak out for those who have no voice and that's a biblical command as well so we are fully invested in exposing these atrocities and this ideology for what it is appreciate you saying that as as a pastor I'm always reminding our congregation at Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church that what you just said this is a gospel issue yes uh, it, it, it's the glory of God is at stake the gospel is at stake if we get this wrong because I do think those uh, can't section it off yeah exactly the, the the secular leaders of our society have wanted to for way too long convince the church to be silent to convince the church to stay out of this this is mere a, a political issue and not a gospel issue and right. so appreciate your voice in this or cultural moment. Or they'll try to moment. wink and nod at it. I mean, I, when I see a church that's draping a rainbow flag over its altar, that's a pagan temple. Yeah. It's Amen. not a Christian church. You Amen. cannot bow to that. That's the symbol yep. of the spirit of the age and I yep. don't believe you can genuflect yes. This is not it. just wrong. No. It's demonic. Yes. And you can't bow before that symbol and expect to inherit the kingdom. Um, you uh, wrote a book with um, our good friend, uh, Jeff Myers, uh, exposing what's happening uh, regarding this gender debate in society. 
Society. Uh, for those in our audience that have not read that book with Jeff Myers, uh, give us a summary of that book and what led you to write it. Jeff Myers approached me. We were at a conference together, but he had been sort of mulling over this for a while um, because he sees the advance of this ideology across all of culture and because it requires the denial of objective truth. Um, and that's, I mean, that's another threat. I mean, it's just like not only there isn't a single area of culture that this doesn't bring ruinous corruption. And so as he is one who works to uh, you know, it's for the formation of the next generation in Christian worldview. You know, that's his that's his area. He he sees the threat of this ideology of gender dogma uh, on that front, um, and so he wanted to collaborate with someone who's been on the front lines of that journalistically. And so he approached me, and we put it together. It's a free download on christianpost.com slash ebook slash gender hyphen lie summit ministries you can also download it but we just wanted to cover the basics of what this is what this ideology is how it functions why it's a medical scandal why children need to be protected and then most importantly the biblical redemptive alternative in embracing god's truth that we're made male and female I, in i've read gender lie um cannot exposing emphasize the gender lie yeah. exposing the gender lie is, it's phenomenal and Thank i appreciate you. appreciate your work and, and and uh, Jeff's work as well. Now, you've done a lot of research, obviously, uh, to write a book like that, a lot of research as you're doing your, uh, you know, your journalism at the Christian Post. Through all of your research, what is one thing that has surprised you and you have learned along the, along the way? About gender ideology? Gender ideology. Unfortunately, what has surprised me the most, and it has devastated me, is that so many pastors are afraid. There are some who are being bold and are speaking truthfully, but doctors will go to work tomorrow and disfigure perfectly healthy children. They will cut the breasts off of girls as young as 13. They will physically castrate teen boys and chemically castrate prepubescent boys. For the life of me, I don't know why the church isn't in motion and in action and decrying like the prophets in the streets, medical crimes that are worthy of being adjudicated at a Nuremberg-like tribunal. Why are pastors silent? That has been the most shocking thing. The other thing is that I think it's just shocking is just that this is actually happening. I sometimes go home to the countryside of Virginia where I'm from and I'll show them pictures of the surgical carnage that appears in my inbox and the color drains from their faces because they can't believe that this is really happening. It's so grim. It's like this analysis paralysis comes over people that they just can't believe it because it's so unpleasant. But this is happening yeah. in children's hospitals nationwide and this is exploding. And I I just, when, when this mass psychosis breaks off of our society, I think I will be among the few people that's not shocked by the vast scope of the carnage but um, pastors I implore you to speak out because if child abuse and cutting off their body parts and sterilizing them is not enough to motivate you to some prophetic action I'm not sure what is related to this issue and we've seen it uh, exposed you know in the last three years is the issue of parental rights yes um, why is this something the church needs to wake up to um, and there's so much we could talk about here the the family being the foundational sphere of a, of a flourishing society but w but why has this issue of parental rights really been kind of thrust into the forefront uh, and why is it an important issue for Christians to talk about and focus on? I sometimes say that transgender ideology functions in a sort of a three-part formula. Capture the mind, chemically castrate and cut the body, and crush the family. It's a scourge. Um, the parental rights question has come not just with this advance of uh, trans ideology and the accompanying medicalization, but also with the pornographic books that are in schools and people, you know, don't want to honor parental request to not have this filth being uh, pummeled into their children's heads while they're in the classroom and all of that. But with gender ideology, it's especially pernicious because state agencies, the, the government, the apparatus of government is being weaponized against families to remove custody in some cases. I know horror stories where 
good, loving parents have had their legal rights removed because they don't agree with this experimental medicalization. And I know of a case where a child wound up dead because, in part because of the custody being removed. And so parental rights is paramount. Yes, you mentioned that the family unit in you know marriage and family is the foundational unit of all of society. And if that's destroyed, all of society is destroyed. So if pastors don't care about that, I don't know what they're even doing because God brings us into his family. He sets the lonely in families. God's all about family. He is three in one, you know, <laughs> like this is integral to who God is. So um, the rights question is, is paramount because that is one of the biggest targets of the activists and the ideologues in high places who are foisting this from the top down upon our society. No doubt. This is not a grassroots movement. This is engineered from the top down. Yep. By very people with a lot of money. Yep, absolutely. So is speaking to parents and grandparents, maybe watching this podcast, uh, their children, grandchildren in public schools, um, what's your advice, your word to them? They've, they've got children that are being exposed to this um, in the classroom, uh, transgenderism, uh, gender fluidity, a, a, a Marxist understanding uh, of gender and sexuality. What would your advice be to them? I think individually they're going to have to seek God and ask the Holy Spirit what they should do in their respective communities and whatever he says to do, just do that. But one of the great things I think everyone can do universally is if you've got kids or grandkids, pray Psalm 139 over them every single day and declare over them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image. Don't don't back down. Confront this however you can and be, and be mindful that God, the victory belongs to Jesus and if we believe in faith, he will give us success in all that we do. He is for us, not against us. And one of the scriptures that has been really animating me a lot lately is that passage in 2 Corinthians 10, which says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the tearing down and destruction of strongholds. And I submit that gender ideology is a particularly pernicious stronghold, but it's no match for the Lion of Judah. So be confident that God is for you and not against you, but fight with all your might because this is evil. That's awesome. Um, so we've talked about pastors standing up and talking about this issue, not shying away from it. What advice would you have for parents that are actually dealing with this in the home? It's one thing to be dealing with it in the classroom, dealing with it in social media, but a, but a, but a family that's wrestling through this, their, their children are confused. Um, what would your advice and your word be to Christian families out there that are dealing with this uh, right there in their home? Uh, I would say if they're in your home and they are in any way receiving outside influence or guidance online, sever that immediately. If they're in school where they're, they're being facilitated, pull them out. The moment that you hear any of that going on, if you can, do whatever you can to protect your children. I mean, don't, don't tolerate an iota of this. You know, I know it is probably very inconvenient to have to make all these changes, but I, let me tell you, I, I've heard, I've lost count how many parents, I mean, countless parents across this country have been shredded because of this ideology. And I think had they taken some more precautions, and this is devouring people everywhere, but it, you can be too careful. Like, Get your kids off tech. Take their phones away. Do not allow these right. outside influences to influence them and to pummel their mind precisely at the time when they're still learning, their cognitive faculties are still developing to learn how to test reality. That's what's so awful about this is that it's corrupting children very young. I've gotten a call where here in D.C., uh, they're, they're putting this this junk in his children's pre-K three- and four-year-olds. Like, these people are evil. So you need to, you know, I'm not being chicken little here. Like the fox is already inside the hen house and it's lunchtime. Yeah. It's really that bad. Absolutely. So I'm not trying to scare people, but just be on your guard all the time and keep this away from your children, but also talk to them. Yep. You're going to have to talk to them about the difficult things, but you've got to win the hearts of your kids before the gender ideologues in culture capture their minds because they're out there. They, they really are coming after your children and that's not hyperbole. Hey man, I, I, as I always remind our our congregation, your children will be discipled. Yeah. The question is by who by and with whom? what? And with what? A and, and we need to be the ones that are raising up the next generation with a biblical worldview for all of life and not shying away from the, these controversial issues. But they're ultimately, as we talked about in the beginning, these are biblical concerns. These are biblical issues. The glory of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, is our first priority. And this is how uh, the enemy would love to get a foothold, a foothold into the 
the next generation. Well, Brandon, thank you so much thank you. for using your platform at the Christian Post to expose this lie, uh, to expose the controversy, and to wake up the church uh, to get involved and to do something about it. Thank you so much. And if people want any more information, do check. They can check out our book. But also we have the Generation Indoctrination podcast series, wherever you get your podcasts. We cover many dimensions there. But um, we will always stand firm on the truth at Christian Post. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to the City of God podcast. If you enjoyed this episode with Brandon Showalter and were encouraged by it, we pray that you would pass it along to a family or a friend that's interested in exploring today's biggest cultural issues all through the lens of God's infallible word. We hope to see you next week right here on the City of God podcast. The City of God podcast is produced by Coral Ridge Ministries and made in partnership with the Institute for Faith and Culture. Visit us at cityofgodpodcast.com to access all of our previous episodes. You can also listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, or anywhere you get podcasts. A full video version of this podcast is available on YouTube. This is the City of God Podcast, where Christ meets culture.